Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, this is Chef again, and we're going to make a weekly watch list again, right? So uh, for those uh, who don't follow us here at CC, uh, go ahead and just subscribe to the YouTube channel. This is where we come out with all the educational stuff and the weekly breakdown. So in just in case you don't know, in case you're new, uh, by all means, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, right? Uh, but anyways, uh, what we normally talk about here is the futures, and I'm going to break down forward slash ES, uh, forward slash NQ, RTY, talk about gold and oil, uh, the VIX, and then the 10-year, which is the bonds. Um, so we're just going to talk about some stuff like this, and then normally what I do is I like to provide a weekly watch list for you guys, the, some of the uh, top setups that uh, we'll be searching uh, for this week, and we'll uh, highlight some of the important things, right? So uh, number one, everybody is looking at the same chart. So just always remember that, right? What's going to happen here is that a lot of people are going to break it down in so many ways and so many explanations. Uh, I am very, someone who is just trade supply and demand, and I am considerate of the uh, the extra catalyst and what's going on economical. And then at the same time, always checking out patterns as well. I like looking at characteristics. I like looking at the way that the futures move, uh, the way that it entails a market sentiment, market direction, that market sentiment in general, that's going to provide direction for the rest of the week. And therefore, grabbing the weekly watch list and applying it to what, what kind of direction we're having this week, right? Never put yourself in a position where you have to be biased just because everybody's saying that there's going to be recession doesn't mean a stock has to drop. Just because somebody is saying that everything is fine and everything is going great doesn't mean we have to hit an all-time high. These stocks, I will remind you that they do whatever they want, however they want, whenever they want, with or without you. Remember that. Okay, so we are here to trade probability. We're here to uh, determine where a level is going to break, the reason why, and also the execution falls on you. So understanding where something changes and where something can be entered for a proper direction, whether it's up or down. So with that being said, uh, let's make this very clear. What do we see? What do we have here? Uh, you can call this whatever you want. Uh, it's kind of a, here, let me, let me take this off. Let's do this. I'm just going to move these so you guys can see what we're talking about here. And all I did was break down uh, break down this ticker here or slash ES. So this is the S&P 500 for those who don't know. Uh, we do have a strong uptrend and this kind of happened after the uh, uh, the COVID drop. So this was the COVID. Here's your drop. Here's your trend to the top side. And then what, what's going on here is that we're, we're in this channel. And to me, it looks like a huge bull flag. Okay. Uh, somebody else is going to tell you that, oh, we're, uh, we're creating a uh, bounce off a trend line. Uh, we broke a trend. Somebody's going to have uh, this trend line here. And it's it's going to be broken down in so many ways, shapes, and forms. But uh, in reality, we are in a big uptrend, no matter what. Okay, There, there are times and there are uh, catalysts in between where uh, the market pulls back. It creates a new small trend. It's a short-term thing, right? But since we hit this all-time high at the beginning of the year, we've kind of been trending down since then right so and then again i'm showing you guys this huge bull flag that's being created or is this just a channel okay you guys tell me however you want to see it i don't care how you see it um the important thing is here is what is going on now where are we and where are we going and what level is going to be determined to either go up or down in this case um, since we have uh, these uh, smaller levels on the weekly time frame, I did mention the last YouTube video, we had this green bullish engulfing candle. All right, some of the characteristics as follow this. What is something that's going to determine if we're going to go up or down? Normally, a healthy, a healthy um, bullish engulfing candle will create a 50% retracement. As you guys can see that I left this here. We're testing this old demand. Okay, so let's make that clear again. This was a demand at one point right here. This was a demand where we bounced off. We wicked off even on this aggressive sell-off. We had that huge green candle, two, three candles. And then the last one was formed a doji. And then that's what gave us a nice head and shoulders. And then that's what created a downtrend all the way down to these uh, lower lows, right? That's what everybody is watching um, because of the inflations and the, and the uh, recession talks and 
uh, the bad GDPs and the CPI numbers and the job reports and, and, and so on and so forth, supply chains. And it just gets a little chaotic. But understand that from the beginning, from the beginning of the year, we've been red and we've been on this downtrend. That has been the trend this full year. We're six months into the year and we finally got a bullish engulfing candle doing a retest of an old demand, right? So that's what we have to understand, all right? The, the, the other part is what are the characteristics of this bullish engulfing candle that can create a short-term trend change, okay? The trend change doesn't, doesn't mean that we're going to start breaking above and, and create all-time highs and things like that. It just means that we're going to be looking for bullish place, okay? So I am not looking for any bearish place. That's it for me. So I'm going to show you some things. Now, it, it, now, if this rejects, if this supply here fails this week, then I agree that we will definitely come down a lot more. Okay, so the trend will continue to the downside. It's, it's, uh, it's the natural trend right now. That's what it is. Long-term wise, if you want to point out, we are still on a good uptrend, okay? So just a matter of how you see it and how you're viewing it. But the levels here that are important are this 4180. Okay, sorry, 4173. Okay, somebody's going to get specific. And then uh, the candle body right here, I don't want it to drop anywhere below 41. So we're going to go on a four hour now just so we can explain this a little bit better. And just so you can see, I, I had broken it down right here as well this morning. And I wanted to point out the importance here. Here's your demand. Here's the break of that demand. He came back up and retested and he got smacked. All right, here you go. Uh, we broke above this little channel right here. We came inside. A nice rally, base rally, dropped down and tested and retested again on Friday. That's where we closed. So to end the week, we ended up with a proper red candle, which is holding that 50% retracement, which is this yellow box here. We also held above this retest, right? So on the four hour, like I said, we're looking for a short term trend change to the upside. Does it have to happen? The answer is no. Does it have potential to happen? Of course it does. You got to be ready for both sides of the coin on this one, okay? It's a little volatile, uh, volatile in the market, so expect some aggressive movements no matter what, okay? Lately, this whole downtrend, um, every single day, there's been enough opportunity to actually trade calls and puts in one specific day. Uh, so it, it's just kind of been the trend and the characteristics, and, and the movements have just been way too aggressive. Um, so either way, above 41, okay, for forward slash yes, we're leaning to the bullish side. Above 42 right here is going to be the continuation of a breakout into that 43. So this is the level that you're going to look for towards the end of the week if we break above that 42. Now, we don't have to do that. We can legit come into that 42 and get smacked down again. We can do something like this. Go up, come down, and then go up again, and then come down and create this like nice little range there to be able to say that, hey, we have a base. We have a sideways action we have that potential uh, to create that. We have that accumulation that can potentially happen before we even move up or before we even move back down. But just remember, as long as we're above 41, I would be looking for call positions in the markets. Now, if we stay below 41 and we come back down, then at that point, start looking for bearish positions. Okay, so any setup that you look for moving forward, if we're above 41, look for calls. If we're below 41, Look for bearish positions. This is the most simple explanation that I can give you based on the way that the supply and demand is forming here. Some people are going to say there's a, there's a bull flag. Some people are going to say that there's a wedge and all this stuff. But in reality, when it comes to supply and demand and, and you know how to trade support and resistance, this is it right here. 41 is that number that's going to be point of control for the rest of the week. If we're above it, we're going up. If we're below it, we're going down. I don't know how, how much more clear I can make that for you guys, but definitely be aware of those specific price points, okay? Above 42, it's going to get a little crazy. There's going to be some, some heavy fighting here. Don't go crazy and start buying tons of calls, okay? Be in the position, but be cautious because there's going to probably be bears at 43. There's a lot of bears because we're still in this uh, nice channel to the downside. The, the bears can come in at 43. So do not buy over 43 just yet, okay? We still need a good retest. 
And this is only going to be a retest. What naturally is going to happen when we get there, it's going to get shorted automatically. People are going to take profits. Nobody's going to want to buy. And those who buy, it's going to be that retail crew who's going to come in and bag hold their positions and they're going to swing for the fences. Next thing you know, they're going to wake up and we're going to gap down and they're going to be pissed because they decided to bag hold a position that they did not understand just because there was a huge green candle. Remember, after every huge green candle, there should be a nice red one. Vice versa, after every nice red candle, there should be a nice green one. So remember that, okay? So it's a very easy week to understand. It's a very um, easy levels to have this week just because the way that it's formed, it, it's perfect, okay? Uh, I, haven't ever, I haven't seen a perfect setup like this in quite some time, and this is, this is it, all right? Um, so that's, uh, that's it for forward slash yes, guys. I hope that makes sense for you. I hope you guys can understand what this is based off the supply and demand. We're just retesting here. And if we can stay above 41, we're good. If we go above 42, even more uh, below 41 bearish. All right. So 41, 42 and 43 uh, every 50 points. That's where you should be cautious. Either take profit, get in, get out every 50 points, whether you're going up or down. Okay. All right, forward slash NQ is just a, a similar same thing, just kind of the way that I explained it. What's happening here, like I said, look, it's broken down perfectly for you. Here's your supply. Here's your supply. Here's the break of that trend. We come up, we come down, retest, 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 retest. So far this week, we confirmed that we're holding this specific level, okay? So this level ranges from 125 to about 125.50. Yeah, 125.50 or even 126. Yeah, 126 to 125. So that whole area is a nice level of demand. If this cannot hold, remember that from this piece, it's going to be the same thing like I explained before slash yes, we're coming down. If we hold above, we're holding up. That's it. So anything above this 125 to 126, start thinking that your positions are a little bit more bullish and stop trying to short things. Uh, once we break below, then this, this is when you start to say, hey, I'm going to go short some tops. I'm going to get into this um, bull flag that's going to fail because we are in a bearish sentiment. Okay, That's when you start to look at your bearish position. So again, I don't know how much easier this can be uh, explained. I know there's going to be tons of people out there explaining things, but I'm giving you the levels that's going to make sense for you, the way that the market sentiment is going to be, no matter what happens, no matter what catalyst is out there, just know that the levels are here that are very, very important. That's it. Okay, so that's forward slash NQ. I'm going to leave RTY for you guys. I think it's kind of the same similar situation. Uh, the difference here is that we have like a nice little uh, weird channel going up. Um, not perfect lines, but uh, just a nice little channel going up. And again, we're hitting that supply. So anything, anything that's hitting supply for the first time, remember, uh, do not go long over it because it's only a retest right now. It's only a... a excuse for the uh, bears to get in right uh, so another thing with gold guys is that gold is actually holding it's been trading sideways for some time you know this, this whole thing with the war uh, had pumped it up and then we created this nice little double top right here and then rejected automatically now we're just going sideways again and there's not a lot of uh, demand for it but it's definitely holding its levels i'm not too concerned about it right now until uh, we start to see some like crazy movement to the downside for the markets and then, you know, gold being used as a safe asset in case we do go into some type of recession. I think gold would be another thing that would run up um, versus trying to come down. So, so far, it's still holding. There's nothing major about gold. Uh, but do keep in mind, guys, that if we do hit a recession, um, you know, recession level or something like that, I think gold would be one of the safest ones to uh, be in calls for. I mean, if that's the way that it goes, right? As for oil, guys, I don't know what to tell you. It's just bullish, okay? Um, bullish because of the supply chains that are aggressive right now. And the, the war is just like so many catalysts and fundamentals behind it that oil is still going to keep trending up. Um, I, I know a lot of people are going to try to catch the top on these and try to short it. Whatever you do, don't try to short oil just yet. Uh, the, these candles are just saying that there's still tons of buyers. I mean, look, look at the size of these wicks. These are weekly candles, guys, okay? 
So let's make that very, very clear. If you're coming against these buyers, make sure that there's a strong catalyst that's going to drive it down and drop it down before you enter or think about entering shorts on oil, anything with oil. Now, I don't think it's wise to buy these stops, but if you're already in them and you've been trading them, don't bag your positions, guys, because those sell-offs will be a little more aggressive on things like XOM, CDX, uh, anything that has to do with oil. So just be careful. If you guys are trading oil, be careful, please. Um, it, it's volatile. It's hyped up. It, it's, it's just crazy. So I don't know. It, it's just, it keeps on rallying. Uh, I really hope that it does drop, you know, during the summer, but gas prices are just gas prices, guys. And we're hurting. Those of, those of you guys who are driving Mercedes and Benz and uh, bigger cars and V8s, and I, I don't know what you guys be driving, but those expensive vehicles, your gas is expensive. Um, as for the VIX, uh, we did, we've been red on two, three, four, five of the past five weeks. So there hasn't been a lot of fear. Okay. This is the one thing that, um, I I'm looking at still. And e even, even with the sentiment being bearish in the market, the VIX hasn't gone any further. Uh, there are times where it does go green, but just know that it's still dropping and, uh, the fear is cooling off in general. So I think the worst is already done. And I think that's. The, the aggressive fear is not here. It's not going to be here until there's something more, um, until there's something new, okay? Because so far, everything is still the same, okay? We, we all know that there's a war. We all know that the interest rates may go higher. We all know that the supply chains from China are, are very weak. So it's a hard time being there. And what we don't know is if we're going to miss the GDP. That's what we don't know yet. So I think that is the only thing that may drive fear. Otherwise, I don't think there's aggressive fear like there was in, in the past uh, few weeks anymore. Just my opinion, okay? Things can change uh, real fast. Um, as for the bonds, they're still green. They're still showing strength. If you guys want to check these out, uh, TNX, if you guys are on TOS, um, this doesn't move crazy. Uh, you can't chart this, okay? So don't come in here and be like, oh, there was a channel and it broke, guys, you know, a wedge. Don't, don't come and do that, please. Um, if this thing keeps trending up and you guys see that it's having a nice green day, just remember that tech will get hit the most. So things like Amazon, Google, Apple, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, AMD, NVIDIA, things like that uh, will get hit the most. So TNX, if this thing is pushing up, there's a higher probability that the uh, market is a little bit red. So it's not always a, a strong indicator. Okay, so I'm not telling you to come on here and check every single day. Uh, but definitely just set some random alerts. And if this thing is hitting, then there's a high probability that the market is red in that sector specifically, okay? So just a little trading tip for you. Uh, for jets, let's go look at the airlines. Airlines, it looks like we have this nice little channel up upwards. And uh, I do like a, a couple tickers from uh, jets. And I think these are like sleeper. Uh, it's a sleeper sector, honestly. It's I know travel is back on and there's there's a demand for travel and people are still going places. Right. I don't think people will ever stop going places no matter what. Uh, so uh, we did break that down. Excellent. Yes. Uh, the, the one ticker that I like from uh, the airlines, I, I like save. Uh, I think the setup here is pretty nice. OK, so we do have this nice little squeeze on the four hour. So for this one. Uh, to trade this, I would say 21 or, or down below. You could just wait till 20 if it breaks 20 or, or just wait till pre-market. So basically what you want to do here is wherever your pre-market is at, once we break above the pre-market, right? So if we break above, we're probably most likely going up. If we break below that pre-market, there's a probability we drive down uh, below. So he buys on this one. It's a, it's a, a ticker for all size accounts and it's on this nice uptrend. So it's been trading sideways, and I think the spreads are a little wide. Oh, let's go check right now. Um, yeah, they're a little wide. It's not bad, but uh, I'm sure they'll adjust this week. So you can catch a little quick move. You can make a quick 10 20% um, for some weekly contracts, especially if you have a small account. As you guys can see, I go to the trade tab, and only like less than a dollar, less than 100 bucks for those who are new to options. So uh, the, the setup here is pretty nice. Uh, another one that I really liked was DAL. I actually did break this one down too. And what I like about DAL is that DAL likes to trade in these ranges and it respects them. 
that's something that I've noticed about the characteristics. So I've been waiting for this thing to drop down here. Unfortunately, I didn't catch it a few weeks back. I was catching all these other tickers. So um, I, I do have my alerts down here. And so if this thing drops right here into this 37 or 38 level, I'm going to start looking for some call positions. Uh, so again, it's a small ticker and it's not too expensive. So if you go to the trade tab, uh, look at this, less than a dollar. So you can buy a couple of these. If you have 500 bucks, you can buy five contracts. And just to get that nice bounce from 37 to 38, uh, all the way to 40. So it likes to get bought up down at these levels. So demand, demand, demand. So far, it's all been demand. And I'm going to look for this week as well, this bottom uh, to hold. And, and then uh, go back up. So what I like about airlines is that you can buy them on some red candles, some big aggressive red candles. And there's a higher probability that these will go back up. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's keep eye on this. Uh, I will definitely post it in uh, conservative collectors if I enter this position again. Um, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see what this has, right? All right. Uh, so back to the thing about oil and uh, the difference here is that we're looking at energy. Um, what I like about XLE is that we're kind of like building this little pattern up here. Okay, so up in these all-time highs, I think this is like a 10-year uh, high, I believe it was. Uh, let's check this out. Let's go 15 years. Yep, all right. So we're at a uh, supply level for XLE. And just like I said, don't try to catch uh, tops and try to enter short positions, but uh, look for pullbacks, okay? Anything that test, that does a test of demand or supply for the first time, there's always a high probability that it will bounce or reject okay if it hits demand for the first time on a weekly level there's a probability that it'll bounce it doesn't mean a reversal it just means that it'll bounce because there's a lot of uh, limit orders that are placed there and uh, bigger institutions have buy orders placed already same with supply the first time that you hit supply the minute we hit it that is the minute that it'll reject. Again, it doesn't mean that there's going to be a strong reversal and then you're calling the top. It doesn't mean that. It just means that a lot of people have sell orders, meaning that, hey, I'm going to take my profits now because I bought at the bottom. Imagine somebody who's been in energy, investors who have been here and just adding on the way up. Do you really think that they're just going to add at supply or do you think that they're going to scale out of their positions? They have limit orders, guys. Remember that. Sell orders, institutions, banks, that's what they have. And once that happens, it creates a nice little pop and then that drop back down. That pop comes from taking profits and retail crew coming in and buying those patterns, okay? That's what it is. So be careful when you're trying to buy these tops on something that's moving, okay? I'm not saying that it can't go up, but definitely understand that your risk becomes a lot higher here, okay? This thing has been running for, for months, okay? Since the beginning of the year, it's been trending. And now we finally created this candle, right? This almost looks like an inverse hammer, almost looks like a doji, uh, whatever, whatever this candle is going to be called. Some, somebody who does candlestick patterns, please uh, let me know in the comments what candle that is. But all I see is this nice supply. I see a nice red candle, and then I drop it down to the four hour, and I see a decrease in volume with the pattern created uh, with the same thing uh, with oil trending up like crazy. So can this keep breaking above? The answer is yes. Does it have to? No. So there, there's more reward to the downside than there is for the upside. But just know that this is a momentum type of um, sector that's just been going. So I wouldn't short it just yet. Now, if this does break below, okay, this 88, I think just the, this level here, this 88 or this uh, 87 level, then I think this is a potential start of a downtrend, maybe. Okay, a pullback. I wouldn't say like that's the top and start getting into two leap shorts. Um, but yeah, just look out for that. Look for the break of 90 or look for the break of 88 to 87. Okay, one of the two's got to hit. Something's got to break. All right. Um, but I guess set those alerts. It's very tight up here. All right. So just be careful with XLE no matter what you do. That's kind of what I'm saying. Uh, all right. Let me give you guys a few tickers that uh, have my attention. I like Facebook. It's a very simple uh, trade here to understand. Very simple, right? Nice little trend line right here. So if we bounce tomorrow, we're going to have a green day for Facebook. If we don't, we will continue to the downside, okay? So there's your entry right there, the 190, okay? Stop loss, 
189, right? Don't let it go below that trend line or don't let it go below the pre-market level. Very simple uh, setup here. Next one is MS. MS is the financials. Look at the way that it's set up. Nice little flag right here. Whether it's going to be a bearish, a bearish flag, a bearish pennant, uh, whatever you guys want to call it, whatever it is, it, it's a break above or a break below, right? Uh, this 80, I would just say 84, use that 84 or 8375 right here, or you uh, over 85, 85 or 8375. Those are your levels to enter. We're either going to come down tomorrow or we're going to push above. Or we might trade sideways and then squeeze a little more and then pop tomorrow. Pop or drop tomorrow, uh, to Tuesday, sorry. Okay, so one and two. All right, Facebook MS, now check out low. This is what I like about low. I, like I say, we're still on this nice downtrend in the markets in general. And we do have this downtrend, but uh, the cool thing about this week is that low they didn't fully reject here. Sometimes when we see the, uh, the reaction of these trend lines, they, they get smacked pretty hard. So as you can see here, Right, and look how many sellers showed up this week. Not that many. So compared to the last two times that we actually hit that trend line, this time we didn't drop that bad, and we're actually holding. So if this thing goes above 198 or 200, it's going to have potential to drive all the way to this 208 and 210 potentially. Right. So look out for low. The other one is going to be its best friend, which is HD, and it's similar setup here. Look at the way that the seller showed up here. Okay. So I'm giving you guys an example that every time. Every time we hit trend lines, guys, they, they, they act as magnets and, and their uh, forms of supply and res, uh, resistance and support, whatever upside or downside you're on. Look how many sellers showed up this time. And then look how many sellers showed up again at the closing. So, not, so the sellers have slowed down and the buyers are coming in. So once this breaks above 308 and 310, this is going to start rocking up 315 and potentially 318, 320. So look for these tickers to change direction this week. I think Monday would be the perfect day um, to look at HD and low together um, just because cat is the one that's leading the way. Sorry. Cat has been just breaking out and it's been trending very nice. So I think HD can be the ones that are a little bit behind with that trend line uh, that can break above um, with some good uh, buying, buying pressure. Okay. So we'll check those out. Now be careful with these two because they're slower movers. And sometimes the, sometimes the opening candle is a lot bigger than the rest of the day. And it literally just goes sideways. So if you're going to enter this position, try to enter as early as possible. I would say maybe like the first 30 minutes just to gauge in, gauge in the uh, market sentiment. And after that first 30 minutes, make sure you have some time on your contracts and you're able to hold for the rest of the day or for the rest of the week, to be honest. So just look for that, all right? I'm going to slow HD. Uh, the other one is going to be ABNB. Another small ticker here for you guys. Probably a lot of you guys are checking this out as well. Uh, nice little supply right here. Uh, I would have alerts around 123.60 area or even at 121. But this thing is squeezing right here, guys. So most likely tomorrow it might have a huge pop, whatever the direction is. Either we're going to break this wick right here, which is like your 117.67, or just use 117.50. Or we're going to pop over that 123, what did I say? 123.50? Yeah, 123. You just say 123. Sorry. So 123 or 117.50. Okay. Those are your entry points for Airbnb. This is a nice, uh, very nice setup for tomorrow as well. Uh, so here's another slower mover that I have, and it's UPS. Uh, UPS has uh, some good little break above candle right here. Had a nice setup here. I Unfortunately, I I took a little loss on Friday because I took a little uh, lot of ODT, but it's all right. It was, an, it was only 15 bucks. Uh, but this thing did break above. So what I want to see with UPS is a continuation, and I want to see this top of 192. Honestly, if this thing goes over this 185, um, it's probably going to continue all the way into that level. So I, I would trail it every like dollar fifty or so, and be patient with this one if it does uh, hold above with the green market. So this could be a start of a uh, uptrend, at least until that supply right there. It's a pretty nice move if we do catch that, just an FYI, okay? Um, but yeah, I think that's it for now, guys. I, I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, please, whatever you do, do not get biased. Uh, do, not, do not reason with yourself as to why something should be green or should be red. 
All you have to understand, guys, is as long as we're above 41, look for bullish setups. If we're below this 41 on ES, look for bearish setups. Okay, very simple to understand this week. Same thing with NQ, that 126 to 125. As long as we hold here, we look for bullish setups. If we're breaking below, then we look for bearish setups, guys. All right. Please, whatever you do, do not get biased. Do not convince yourself that something has to be red or something has to be green. Please understand the levels and uh, don't over oversize your positions. Manage your risk properly, guys, and take it day by day. All right, whatever you do, don't give up with your trading. Don't stop. Keep learning. Keep growing and learn. Okay, very simple. So I'll leave you guys with that. Uh, hopefully this helps you guys see the market in a clear, simple perspective. And don't overcomplicate things, please. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, see you guys in CC. Um, if you guys have any uh, ideas for more videos or anything like that, please let us know. Tag us in the uh, YouTube right in the comments or just simply tag us in conservative collectors or on just the uh, Instagram for uh, conservative collectors. Too. All right. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Y'all have a green day.